well, um, let's see how well you handle these encounters on your own. Now, when last we saw our heroes, you beat the ever-loving fuck out of a coven of hags, uh, <laughs> and by throwing all of them into a cauldron. Yeah, well, I'll just imagine that he uh, that he finally got over his fear and he ran back. Yeah, that's what the party did while you were away. They they grappled the hags and just tossed them one by one into a cauldron of boiling acid. Murdered him. Yeah, he, yeah, he goes in and the smell of his ah, ah, oh god. Now, the party has already gathered up uh, these uh, potion vials, uh, five of them to be exact, which protect you from the fog of madness for one hour. And this fog of madness allegedly surrounds the entirety of the Black Tear Castle estate. So if you're headed in that direction, when you see the fog, you're going to want to drink one of those potions. All right, I'm going to... Uh, okay, so five, huh? Layer 5, you're nowhere near it right now, but when you get there, keep it in mind, because otherwise some uh, shenanigans might happen. All right. I'm going uh, to put them on my person, and uh, da uh, damn it, the one who has the black orb of uh, has, uh, is on. Uh, is in our uh, jesters, on jester's person. Ah, yes, that reminds me. Thank you for reminding me. I need to add something to your character sheet. Ah! Homebrew on. All right. Let me know uh, when you uh, put it in, so I can re, uh, so I can refresh my uh, character sheet. And homebrew off. It has been added to your sheet. All righty. So, you have spent some uh, time with this orb of yours, and you have spent enough time to uh, study it and understand the mechanics of what it does. Look in your equipment, in your inventory. I don't see it. I'm going to try again. Maybe if I equip it and attune you to it, it'll show up if you refresh the page. Do you see it? One second, uh, refreshing again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm on Jester's character sheet. I'm an idiot. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, that might help. Heck yeah. You mixed. Uh, is it because of the fact that I was a bard last campaign? Yes. Bad, uh, bad DM. <laughs> Sometimes these characters just kind of run together. Yeah. Uh, God, this is not Theron. I knew this is Periwinkle. All right. Equip and attune. All right. Now, now refresh your sheet.
I have it. All right. You want to read the ef the effect for the class, or do you want? Or actually, there's nobody else here, so you don't have to keep it a secret. <laughs> you'll you'll decide whether or not to keep it a secret when the uh, if and when the group the rest of the group joins us. I will actually be right back. All righty. Okay, so also, just in case you don't remember, you have uh, recently encountered a uh, character named Boo who was trapped inside of a, uh, a church in the middle of the swamp wilds. Um, and you have discovered that basically she can eat anything Kirby style and it never gets digested, it all just gets teleported into this void inside of her mouth. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, Periwinkle's not going to uh, try and go uh, go in just yet. Uh, try and uh, anything with her just yet. He'll just uh, go. Uh, he, But he will go to her and he will ask her one last question. All right. Have you ever tried reaching into your mouth and pulling out whatever's there? She opens up her mouth, and it's a very tiny mouth, and she cannot fist her, fit her entire fist inside. She is, in fact, not Kirby. Oh, oh there, uh, there goes that, uh, that idea. Like, uh, and he's not exactly wanting to lose his hand, so he's going to... All right. Oh. Uh... Yes, well, I, I'll, have you tried act, like, uh, it might have, we might be actually, uh, get you to leave now, but, like, I don't know. I uh, can see if you can. I'm like, uh, going to guide her towards the, uh, towards the door. So the party tried this last time, and as soon as she touched the doorway or an open window, she was catapulted 60 feet back, straight backwards at high speeds and got knocked unconscious. Yeah, uh, he remembers. He still has the ugly bruise uh, from when he caught her last time. She will refuse to go towards the door because she's scared of getting hurt again. All right. I'll, we'll see if, uh, if we can get, uh, get you free from this place uh, uh, later. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Periwinkle, uh, but before he leaves, go. Where, uh, which direction is the, uh, is the castle again? North. North? Yes, yes. All right. He pats her on the head before heading out. All right. As you head north, um, uh, uh, re passing by the uh, witch's coven, um, you see there is a um, kind of like a uh, an open trail. There's a main road with a handful of smaller side roads that sort of split off and uh, go into the darkness. You realize that you've been here for many, many hours, but the sun hasn't really uh, risen or set. It's just sat at the horizon, bleeding out just a tiny amount of sunlight, just enough to see by. It's like it's frozen in time. Uh, but, uh, this is fine. As with drow, this might as well be midday. So with uh, dim light lighting your way, do you uh, trudge along the main road, or you, do you take one of the side roads and see what happens? I, I, uh, I, I, yeah, I lost my ball bearings. I can't really use them to mark the which uh, path I go down. I, uh, he'll scra uh, scratch his uh, uh, action, and he will, uh, he will continue going north. 
All right. As you as you continue going north, uh, the um the road leads to what appears to be a uh, farm or ranch of some kind. You can see a, a man in a hat uh, wrangling some fenced-in goats. Uh, 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 Periwinkle will hide. All right, as you hide and observe, you can see uh, this man in a cowboy hat. All of his goats have little ropes around their necks, and he is trying to uh, wrangle them together uh, for one reason or another, and they keep outrunning him. He managed to grab one of them by the neck, and he forcibly drags it inside. And as he opens the door to the shed, uh, you can see that it is in fact a slaughterhouse. And he's trying to get some meat, but the goat understands that it is a slaughterhouse and is kicking and screaming and uh, uh, thrashing about, trying to avoid being pulled into the slaughterhouse. Uh, uh, Periwinkle will observe for a bit before. Uh, 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 see where uh, what happens uh, happens next. He eventually manages to get the uh, the sheep sort of uh, fenced in inside of the slaughterhouse, and he pulls out. Um, uh, let's see this. Let me pull up a picture of it actually. You've actually never seen this device before, but this is what it looks like. Ah, yeah, I know what those things are, but yeah, Periwinkle has never seen it. Uh, he's more kosher. So you see him like uh, get this uh, goat into a very cramped and uncomfortable pen. The goat is trying to wiggle free, but it can't. It's got no space to move, and he takes out the bolt pistol and. With a hydraulic thunk, it goes directly into the goat's head, and the goat falls limp. The uh, spike retracts into the, the pistol. He sets it aside and pulls out a knife to start butchering the meat. All right. Periwinkle is going to... Uh, uh, he's going to... Uh, got, scra uh, scratch his chin before uh, thinking, hmm, I have an idea. And he's gonna, uh, he's gonna try and grab one of the, uh, one of the goats, or sheep. So you see that this goat farm, that is clearly large enough to handle dozens of goats, only has three, well, two now. Uh, and they are, uh, they're pressed up against the edge of the fence as far away from the slaughterhouse as they can physically be. So if you sneak her around the brush, you can probably reach through the fence and touch them. All right. Hmm. I... I Periwinkle's gonna reach through the fence and give one of them, uh, give one of them a, sma a sound smack on the rump. The goat bleeds. <laughs> And it's going to uh, thrash about and start running in circles around the pen. The farmer will, uh, you know, rush outside to see what all the ruckus is about. And he's going to try and uh, catch the goat. The goat is substantially faster than this overweight middle-aged man. So he ends up running fruitlessly in circles trying to catch this goat. Hmm. Uh, okay, he's going to... Hmm. Periwinkle is gonna, uh, he's going to, like with the uh, second one, since that one's pro uh, 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 is either confused or not moving at all. Uh, you can see it's pressed up against the fence, giving the, uh, the two, uh, the man and the goat, plenty of room to run around in circles. You see the goat is like juking side to side like a football player trying to get around him. But he can't actually escape because the fence is far too high. All right, Periwinkle's gonna take out his uh, dagger, and he's gonna hamstring the uh, the other one. Jesus, dude. Okay, uh, make a stealth check. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, specifically, like you're gonna take out its leg so it can't run away, right? Yep. All righty.
All right, you're you are so stealthy. You make so little noise that the goat is so distracted that you could easily pull out your dagger and slash at its leg. I'm going to let you roll for damage uh, because it's pressed up against the fence, not moving, not resisting. At advantage. I'm going to give you a free hit because it's not moving out the way, so you can easily just reach through the fence links and slit it without rolling to hit. So just roll for damage to see if you kill the goat. Alright, let me look at the uh, HP for this creature really quick and I'll find out if it bleeds out. Oh good, they have an actual goat. Oh yeah, that goat is bleeding out uh, within seconds and it falls, it uh, runs away a few uh, feet, but its artery has been opened. It gets about 10 feet away before it falls over dead. Uh, uh, Periwinkle's gonna smile to, him, uh, smile to himself. Uh, and he's gonna put on his best uh, 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 at Grawl, that makes any sense. Uh, well, that there, uh, there, uh, goat uh, is now ready for you, and he's gonna stride out. I genuinely did not understand what you said. Uh, okay. Well, that there goat is now ready for you. God damn it! Why'd you go and do that to my goat for? I'm only, I got too few goats as it is. I thought I thought you. Uh, well, I saw you. Uh, you. Uh, you. Uh, uh, struggling to catch him, so I, I thought to help. Well, I don't need your help. You think I'm incompetent? What do you want? Well, I. Uh, well, I, uh, I reckon I need, I need directions. Directions? Where the hell are you trying to go in this little hellhole? Tell you what, wherever you came from, best idea, turn right back around and head home. Well, I, well, I say, uh, well, I say, well, I say, uh, I would love to, but I gotta do something first. What's Otherwise, your target? I can't leave. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, oh, I say, well, I say, I gotta, uh, I gotta do something first. Otherwise, I can't leave. Well, I say, well, I say, well, I say, what could you possibly need to do in these here parts? This is a wasteland, you hear? Waste land. Well, uh, well, uh, my corpulent friend, uh, I need to get uh, get a a, a a little bit, uh, uh, go to the, uh, to a there a, a castle and uh, uh, get obtain a. A certain black thing from a. Uh, from, okay, I, I'm. This is just uh, causing my soul to die every time. I, every word I say, I keep going. <laughs> I, I, uh, you can feel free to talk normally or keep it up. It's entirely up to you. All right, but I'll continue. Uh, like my soul's dying every time I do it. But yeah. Oh, I need to go that. that I go to the castle that, uh, and get a, a tiny. I said, oh, I got doohickey. Well, where the hell is your doohickey located? Oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, this here big, a uh, big castle. Big castle? Well, that's shit. There's only one of them around here, and that's the Black Tier Castle. And you definitely don't want to go anywhere around there. Tell you what, Fog of Madness messed you right up. Well, uh, well, I met some nice, uh, nice hags, and she, uh, she, they partied with, with one, uh, something that'll help me. Well, shit, even if you can't survive the fog of madness, there's a cave full of Komodo dragons between you and that castle, so I still advise against it. I, I like to say, I like to do otherwise, but I, I kind of gotta. Well, tell you what, you know, 
if you're messing around in that there cave anyways, you're probably going to need to kill some Komodos. Tell you what, if you uh, kill all of them little suckers, all of them goat eating some bitches, I'll give you a little bit of reward. Go on. The only way to get from uh, past that cave into that there castle is with a rowboat, and I just so happen to have one. You could, of course, make your own dinky little raft and hope it doesn't capsize, but, you know, kill some Komodo dragons for me. Nice little boat will help you out. Hmm. You know what? Uh, you know what? Uh, like old timer, I'll take you up on that, that there uh, deal. All right. Less than a quarter mile up north, you gotta go to the Lion's Mane Cave. You can't miss it. It's full of Lion's Mane mushrooms. Lion's Mane mushrooms? Yes, sir. What are, the, uh, what are those uh, mushrooms do? As far as I can tell, nothing. But there's some creepy weirdos who sure do like to eat them, and they eat them all the time. I don't know if they have one of them medicinal benefits or something. What are these weirdos uh, you, uh, you talk about? There's a whole bunch of black-coated weirdos wandering around every which way. Bunch of creepy, tall, scraggly-looking some bitches, And, you know, I have to sacrifice a goat to them every gosh darn month, or they'll flay my skin off. Hmm. Okay, Erica, I might have an idea. You got an idea? Well, that's more than I got. Erica, he, he's gonna, Erica, which direction I, I call those uh, damn scraggly looking de uh, like, uh, fellers? Well, they came from where you did. They like to uh, creep away from those little side roads, sneak around in the middle of the night and raise hell to anyone dumb enough to be on the road. And I tell you what, they have been any goat I have that I don't personally eat or get eaten by these Komodos, they up and steal. Nothing but sons of bitches. Hmm. Okay. So you say they eat, uh, they eat their mushrooms, right? All the time. Like a smile creeps across his face. Well, I'll, I'll, well, I'll go handle the Komodo dragons, and maybe I'll even handle the uh, then scraggly, uh, scraggly uh, uh, near the whales. Well, tell you what, I don't have much, uh, much in the way of finances to repay you if you killed them scraggly some bitches. But you will have shelter and my undying gratitude. Well, I'll hold you to that. And uh, and he's gonna head in the direction of the com of the uh, cave of the Komodo dragons. All right. Well, it's not hard to fight the uh, lion's mane cave, as you can uh, you can see there is a, a, a um <clears throat> there are about uh, five Komodo dragons in a sort of wolf's pack. All right. I'm gonna look for the uh, mushrooms. So you can see um, the cave itself is very dark, and you can see there are five Komodo dragons, each one of the five dragging a, uh, a half-dead goat by the, by the side of the head. These goats are, you know, larger and heavier than these Komodos, but they just do not care, just thrashing them into the cave. Uh, the cave is uh, dark, and there's nothing bioluminescent inside. Do you have uh, dark vision? I, I have enhanced dark vision. Drow. You, uh, you have a strong sensation that once you actually get to the cave and your eyes adjust to the dim light, you'll be able to see clearly. But from this point, you can't exactly see what's inside. All right, I'm going to sneak in. All right, the Komodo dragons drag these half-dead squirming goats into the cave, and you follow along with them. Make a uh, stealth check for me. You melt into the shadows. All right. Well, uh, while I'm uh, while I'm in, I'm gonna I go look for the mushrooms. 
that uh, he was talking about. So high up at the tops of the cave, like in the crevice between the ceiling and the walls, you see these long white strings uh, arranged almost like the mane of a lion in the cracks and crevices. Um, you wouldn't know it was a uh, mushroom if you weren't specifically looking for it. It looks more like a ball of yarn than anything. Hmm. All right, I have no way to, I got, he gives his uh, scratch before he, uh, he picks up, a, uh, he picks up a rock and he's going to throw it at the, uh, at the mushrooms. All right, as you pick up a rock and you chuck it, it lands dead center in a, in a group of mushrooms and the mushroom sort of poofs out like it deflates absorbing the impact and the threads almost practically swallow it it's almost like you've uh, thrown a rock at one of those squishy stress balls and the rock falls to the ground and doesn't make a sound until it hits but when it does you can hear the komodo uh snarl and head towards the source of the sound all right i'm gonna move uh, move away so that i don't get caught in the uh, in their path you see the uh, five of them are uh, examining the rock, sniffing it, clawing at it, trying to figure out what made that motion. Uh, they eventually get bored and wander back over to their horde of goats. Well, I might have an idea. On, uh, I got... So the cave walls are about 15 feet high. And these lion's mane mushrooms are right in the crevice at the ceiling. It's very, very blocky, potentially climbable, but it'd be better to climb it if you have a tool at your disposal. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, I'm gonna uh, when the uh, when the komodo dragons move away, I am going to. Uh, Okay, so, so the, so the strand, uh, the strands of fungus. How uh, low do they hang? Um, so it's about fifteen feet up, and the strands are hanging about two feet down low. All right, so only two. Uh, they're only two feet long. Okay. Yeah, they're about a foot and a half wide, two feet long, and they're uh, they. They line the inside of the cave ceiling, so there's a handful of them scattered about the cave system. All right. I'm gonna. Uh... All right. I'm going to uh, take my hooded lantern and uh, keeping it a uh, keeping the uh, opening as small as I can. I'm gonna light it. Hooded lantern. Okay, so you're able to uh, cast a bright light in about a 30-foot uh, uh, radius. Um, and you said you're s shrinking it to the smallest aperture. Where are you pointing it at? Uh, coming, uh, uh, I'm just doing it to try and keep my... Uh, I'm pointing it directly at the wall at, that my back is facing, so I don't end up alerting the uh, uh, the Komodo dragons that I'm there. Okay, you're still illuminating a portion of wall which they can see, but they don't particularly care. All right, with it uh, with it lit, I'm going to I'm going to test it, uh, test it by moving it back and forth, see if it goes out when I do so. Moving the lantern? Yep. Uh, the lantern does not extinguish. The hood protects it from the wind. All right. Hmm. I'm going to... Uh... All right. He's going to take a bit of... Uh... 
he's gonna uh, do a bit, a bit of. Uh, he's gonna be doing a bit of MacGyvering. He's gonna uh, take a, a bit of hemp and rope that he has, cut off a, uh, cut off a piece. Uh, take one, uh, one of the flasks of uh, oil flasks. Stick the, uh, stick the uh, rope partially in so it's still hanging out. And uh, do this. Uh, do the same for as many as he can. I, I think I have like five. One second. You're attaching five hooded lanterns to a rope. Now uh, I'm essentially making a uh, fantasy version of Molotov cocktail. I only have two oil flasks, but I'm gonna uh, uh, take the. I'm going to uh, stick par, uh, like a cut par, uh, a small a, like six inch. Uh, uh, four to six inches of uh, hemp and rope off uh, off the uh, length I have, and uh, with the portion I cut off, I'm going to stick uh, uh, partially submerge it into the oil flask, kind of like a uh, uh, to basically. Uh, uh, actually, I'm going to submerge it completely, uh, submerge it on both ends so that they're uh, evenly soaked before partially pulling it out. To, and I'm gonna do the same for the other one. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm essentially making a firebomb. Okay, so how many flasks of oil in total are being used in this mechanism? Two. I'm just looking up the uh, damage output for a flask of oil. Lancy, um, uh, do, 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 do. you can throw it up to 20, or 20 feet, at which point it shatters on impact, improvised weapon, da 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 da. Um, so the target takes five fire damage from the burning oil, and it covers a five foot square area. So if you've got two flasks, that's a, uh, a 10 flat damage. All right. What I'm gonna do? Uh, what I'm gonna? What I'm gonna do after I get the? After I get them prepared, I'm going to light one, and I'm gonna throw. Uh, I'm gonna huck, uh, huck it at uh, one of the lion's mane uh, mushroom thing. Uh, except, uh, throwing it in such a way that it shatters on the on the stone ceiling, so that it uh, it, it catches the lion's mane on fire. Okay, so um, uh, you're able to uh, huck this lantern and oil flask combo into the uh, the lion's mane. Um, let me have you make a uh, a athletics check to see if you can use do a poof a perfect football spiral and smash that thing at dead center. So you miss, you miss by about five feet, and as the oil splashes over, a small amount of lit oil touches the um, uh, the lion's mane. Uh, the lantern hits the ground, alerting the Komodos, and you see this lion's mane is flammable, and it starts to combust in place, creating smoke and flame within the cave. The Komodos are pissed, and they start charging at you. Crap, 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 crap! So, there's about 60 feet between you and them. So are you running or are you fighting? I am running. All right. So you can easily exit the cave before they catch up to you, but you notice they are much faster than you are. So make a stealth check to see if you can lose them from your trail. Gotcha. The uh, Komodos, working as a group, are able to sniff out your location um, as you are hiding behind a tree. 
you realize that they found you when they're about 15 feet away. Roll for initiative. Or actually, let me start the initiative. Crap. All right, so the five Komodos go first. They're 15 feet away, and they quickly close that distance. And they make two attacks, one with their bite and one with their claws. I got disadvantage, or at least uh, with uh, one of them, see if, whether or not they hit. If they, don't, if they miss, it continues at disadvantage. I'm not, like... I believe you, but I'm not sure what feat you're referring to, because I want to look up the exact properties of that. I it's the displacement robe. Robe of displacement. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, you projects an illusion that makes you be... Da -da -da. Any, uh, any creature has disadvantage against you. If you take advantage, damage, the property ceases to function. Okay. Or at least a round. Okay, so what's their two hit? Plus four. Okay. That hits. All right, well, that ceases to function immediately. No, it's still a good one, just that it works better for those that have a high armor class. So each of them have multi-attack, so that's nine more. Yeah, Periwinkle is probably going to get torn apart here. All right, what's your armor class? Fourteen. Big oof. Um, this was meant for a party of three, by the way. Uh, so that's one, two... Let's see. So the first one hit, followed by two, three, four, five, six. Oh, God. Yeah, poor Periwinkle is going to get torn apart here. But, all, like, uh, it happens. Wait, I think I did that wrong. One moment. Let's see. Uh, it's plus two. There's six of them, so plus 12. There we go. So with the Komodos uh, surrounding you, they uh, bite and claw and thrash and, and scrape against your flesh, and you, you take 28 piercing and or slashing damage. Uh, did we take a long rest? Yes, you did. Alrighty, I am hurt, but I'm still alive. Alright, it is your turn. You are wounded severely, you are outnumbered, and these things are absolutely vicious. You do not want to be here. No, I don't. You're a rogue, right? Yes, I am. Let's see those cunning actions work, my friend. What you gonna do? Cunning, uh, if I <laughs> cutting action uh, disengage, I basically uh, like, uh, like I'm gonna try and do the whole ninja vanish thing. All right, cunning uh, action. You disengage. I'm assuming you're moving your full movement away. At least thirty feet before hiding. All right. Let's see that stealth roll.
Nice! And I believe that ends your turn. Yeah, because I had to use the bonus action to, uh, to so I wouldn't get torn apart when I, uh, like, uh, when I run away, and, uh, yeah. So the Komodo dragons are very perceptive creatures. They have excellent senses of, you know, sight, uh, hearing, and especially smell. So they, they are actively hunting you down. Um, narratively speaking, I'm going to say that to, uh, hide your scent, you cover yourself in mud, around like your neck and armpits to kind of hide your natural scent and then just kind of hide under the branches and the mud and the various forest debris and they are sniffing aggressively and they walk right over you trying to find you. I want you to make a wisdom save to not freak the fuck out as they walk over you looking for you. Gotcha. All right, you scare the every living shit out of them because one of them steps, um, just, uh, he just, a firm scratch uh, against your throat. It, it doesn't technically do damage, but it hurts like tell. It causes you to freak out. You spring from the bushes from your stealth position, giving you an upper uh, round of uh, a surprise round. Oh, crap. Shit. And I, uh, heck on reflex, I pull my, uh, 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 I pull out my dagger and I stab him in the, uh, stab him in the nose. All right, so you're initiating combat. Well, you do have the surprise round. Roll for that hit, my dude. Mother trucker. Oh, that would have been max damage too. Your dagger uh, just misses by millimeters as you stab the ground beside it. <laughs> cutting action, uh, uh, cutting action, disengage. Okay, action to attack, bonus action to disengage. You have your movement. Run. You don't have anything to boost that running speed, do you? No, I don't. Do you end your turn? Yeah, there's nothing else I could do. I can't, I can't cost an action or a bonus action to hide. All right. So let's see if this time around, if you can get another round of actions before they dogpile you. Because they are angry, they are hungry, and they are out for absolute blood. Alrighty, uh, uh, Periwinkle gets an idea, he's, uh, as he's going to go to uh, hide, he's going to take out his orb, and he's going to activate it while, but, uh, by putting it on the ground, and yeah, basically he's going to put it, he's an action to put it on the ground to act it, and activating it so it draws their attention, and he's going to cunning action hide. All right, let me have you roll for initiative first to see if you can do that before they do. They got an initiative roll of seven. Shouldn't be too hard to beat. Oh, yeah. So you're taking your action to deploy this trap and then cunning action hiding? Yep. Roll stealth. Absolutely. And I'm assuming you're moving another 30 feet away, putting a total of 60 feet of distance between you and them? Yep. The uh, Komodos all start searching for you, but you're, uh, you've gone very far away. You've hidden yourself under the mud and the trees. You've blocked off your scent and you feel relatively hidden. And as they start sniffing around, they see this orb and they bat at it more out of curiosity than actual aggression. They clearly don't know what it is. 
activate. I'm going, come on, work, work, work. All right, just because it's more fun, I'm going to have them all roll their saves all at once. Gotcha. Okay, so any creature within a 120 foot cone, so yeah, they're definitely all going to hit, uh, get caught in that DC 12 con save. Okay, what is the con save of these creatures? Plus two, okay. This could go either way. On roll low. Seven. All right, you see the Komodo dragons just sort of become lazy and tired and they move sluggishly. They just sort of wander around tired and unmotivated. One of them just kind of falls prone and rolls over on his side with no desire to do anything. All right. The Komodos waste their turn being completely useless and non-aggressive. So you do have your turn. Um, you, uh, you've attuned to it, so you know that this effect could be temporary. They could break out of it. So do you continue to put distance, or do you roll into attack while uh, you have the advantage? I'm going to uh, roll to attack because, uh, to, because uh, damn it, I'm gonna, uh, like I'm gonna, because god damn it, I need them gone. And the fact of the matter is, if this does not work, I'd rather uh, start uh, hedging my bets now. Uh, start uh, consolidating what I got. All right, you do have advantage to hit because of the they have succumbed to this lethargy. They are not being aggressive or evasive. They're just kind of laying there. However, there is one that is prone, which neutralizes the um, uh, advantage because you normally have disadvantage to hit someone who is prone. I'm going to lose an arrow at the one that... Uh... And one of those that isn't prone. All right, roll for it. That's a hit. And uh, time for the sneak attack damage. Absolutely. God damn it. <clears throat> so as your bow hits it in the uh, the shoulder, you see this creature uh, take the hit, growl in pain, and fall prone as it starts to like uh, chew at the arrow in its shoulder. It is in pain, it is down, but it is still alive and kicking. All right, I am going to a coming action hide again. All right, let's see those numbers. Nice. All right, so um, let's see. At the end of their next turn, they repeat the con save. So I'm gonna roll once for all of them once again. Come on, fail. That's the uh, plus two constitution. 11. They, uh, let me, Take a look here. So they fail their next con save. And on the second uh, con save, they become petrified for one minute. If the petrified creature takes damage, they break out of their stony shell immediately. They repeat the save at the end of their turn for the duration of the minute. If they do not break out of the stone within one minute, they become stone, permanently dead. All right. I, uh, I, uh, I, per, I, uh, so. Periwinkle's gonna get an is gonna get an idea. Let's hear. It. Uh, he's gonna. Uh, uh, he's gonna. Ta uh, he's gonna. Uh, so these th uh, thing, uh, the nastiest thing they have is their mouths, right? Absolutely. He is going to uh, take what uh, what left uh, uh, the what's left of his hempen rope. And he is going to tie, uh, he's going to tie their mouths shut. Nice. You know what? Since they are stone, uh, let's see. Uh, 
I'm going to give you a sleight of hand check with advantage to make it as tight as possible. The better your roll is, the harder it will be to break out. At advantage? You have advantage on your sleight of hand to tie all of their mouths shut. Absolutely. So you are confident that, the, uh, that these ropes are tied on tight. They are not getting out. Okay, Echo, please, please, please let this work. And as he, as, uh, uh, the best thing for him to do is try and be away from them as he can. So he's going to go back to the cave to see how it's doing. All right, let me do a series of con saves. Let's see, one minute. So that's 10 saves. Let me just do like an iteration roll and see at what point they break out if they do. You know, like, I'm, this is me being hopeful, but I, like, I, but uh, I'm hoping that they like, fail them all. And the very first one succeeds. All right. So, um, you basically have an entire six second turn, uh, while they are still petrified before they all break free. So you have 30 feet of movement. You said you're moving towards the cave? Are you, yep. uh, are you dashing? Yeah, I'm dashing. So you are able to uh, sprint around the corner of the cave, and then you can hear the shattering as all of the Komodos break free from their stony prison. And the, you can hear them moving at full speed again. They appear to have completely recovered. I uh, got Parry Winkle's got a cuss in, uh, cuss in, uh, in under common in such a way that's gonna that even Wolf would end up uh, uh, telling him to uh, to chill out. And uh, they are coming to you, so you have the advantage if you want to set something up in advance. Hmm. Okay, but how's the fire doing? Uh, the fire is slowly burning itself out. It appears to have burned about uh, 80 to 90 percent of the actual mushroom. All right, I am going to, uh, like with my other, like I still have the other flasks, so I'm going to, no, oh, you're not going out just yet. Like I, and I, I, can I throw my remaining oil flask in it to, to try and spread the flames? At the uh, entryway that, where the Komodos are, are going into, or at the uh, nearly already dead fungus? Nearly already dead fungus. All right, I can get the athletics check to uh, whip it. All right, you effortlessly throw this Molotov cocktail, you completely singe all of it, and all of this mushroom has been reduced to char and ash. It is still firmly planted in the ceiling. There are others within the cave. And now I'm going to hide. All right, go for it. Mother! Dice gods are not in your favor. Is there anything else you want to do on your turn before they come whipping around the corner? I'm going to uh, use dancing lights to try and get the Komodo dragons off uh, off my trail. Okay, so uh, describe to me what you're doing. Are you just like putting a bunch of lights at the entrance of the cave, or what? I am gonna put the uh, da uh, the strike. Uh, remembering what uh, Jester did, I'm gonna put them in a string of lights, kind of like a to. Uh, Move, uh, move them in a direction away from the cave, ma uh, making them uh, assume I'm running away. Fair enough. Uh, how uh, how far does this uh, the range of the spell go? I will take a look. Let's see, 120 feet, one minute. Okay. So. Um, it, sh it, it sheds dim light in a 10-foot radius, so you can arrange them in like a 10-foot line. 
and then you could move them up to 60 feet to a new spot. So you've got quite a bit to work with here. So as the Komodos whip around the, uh, the corner, um, pissed off that you turn them to stone, they see these dancing lights, they immediately get agitated, and they start chomp, chomp, chomping down at the lights, attacking it. I am moving them further away. All right, so you, uh, you're able to sort of move them farther and farther away until they kind of disappear into the woods. All right, taking that uh, egg for, uh, for as much as I can, uh, can, I am going to see about trying to sabotage the rest of the uh, mushrooms. All right, so with no time constraints, you have plenty of time to uh, move about the cave and mess with these uh, mushrooms. But as you do, you see that your wounds from the fight are starting to get, you know, swollen, angry, and infected. Yeah, there's not really much I can do about that. Like, uh, I'm going to make the attempt to try, uh, like, like, uh, more cussing. I'm going to try, like, uh, I'm going to use my, uh, the cleanest dagger I have to try and, uh, like, uh, like, uh, basically I'm trying to get the pus out. All right, make a medicine check. I am not good at this. Well, how about that? So, the, your body is covered in scratches and bites, but only the bites appear to be in, infected as their saliva has something absolutely rancid inside of it. So you have to sit there. It takes several minutes to like carve away the infected tissue, leaving only the uh, healthy tissue. It hurts like hell, and it takes a really long time, but you're eventually able to clean out your wounds. Like, uh, yeah, after I do that, I'm going to uh, take a look at my, I'm going to take a look at my, uh, my water skin and I'm going to sacrifice it to try, uh, to try and make bandages. All right. Um, let's see. Are you proficient in uh, Tinker Tools? No, I, I just, I, I just have a dagger and, and a disguise kit. All right, so let, let me get, give me a flat uh, sleight of hand check. Gotcha. You destroy your water skin uh, and waste it, unable to make clean bandages. <sighs> I don't know how much I can do about them now. Okay, but I'm going to... Uh... But at least they're he's thinking, well, at least they're clean. Uh, I'm gonna son of a uh, uh, he mutters uh, curse words under his breath as he goes about uh, sabotaging the uh, the mushrooms. And since he has some time to uh, some time, he's gonna uh, do it by. Uh... Damn it! I lost the rope. I no longer have the rope. Like, uh, I am going to uh, take the pitons and uh, use them as. Actually, wait a minute. That's not gonna. That's not gonna work. Damn it! I mean, what are you trying to do with the pitons? I was gonna use them as a uh, like as uh, foothold. Uh, foot. Uh, like, uh, you know how in uh, Tomb Raider, uh, she uses the arrows as a uh, place to uh, plant her feet. Yeah. Oh, mine's a bit, a bit more. Uh, makes a bit more sense. He was going to be using the pitons as ways to, to as a basically as an impromptu step ladder. You can certainly try. Make a survival check to see if you can firmly plant those pitons into the weak spots of the stone. The stone is just way too hard, and all you're doing is dulling your pitons. Okay, swears under his breath before. Uh, then he get, gets another idea. Is there still a fire going? Um, it's very quickly burning out. 
All right. I'm going to like uh, I'm going to take one of my candles and I'm going to light it to uh get myself a uh to try and get uh, get some fire and I'm going to uh and I'm going to uh uh, okay, so I still have the scraps of uh, like from the water skin. Yeah, you still have scraps, just they're not uh, sufficient for bandages, but you still have the raw material. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna wrap the scraps around the head of the arrow, and I'm gonna uh, light them, and I'm gonna destroy uh, try and destroy all the uh, the uh, fungus. I like that idea. Because it's a cool idea and you don't have any real time constraints, I'm going to say that works. You put little slivers of leather, light them, and uh, fire them. You miss several times, but since there's no time constraint, you're able to just keep firing until it works. And you successfully destroy all of the uh, the lion's mane fungus. Yeah, guys. Well, my initial plan uh, well, was kind of bungled, but at least I... See about uh, trying to do so, uh, do something uh, do something else, and uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm going to leave the cave and because uh, odds are the uh, the Komodo dragons are gonna come back. You can hear them snarling in the distance. They're not that far away. Yeah, I'm move, I'm getting out of the I'm getting out of the cave and I'm gonna find a safe spot to to hide. All right, so there's a main pathway that continues northward um, that you can uh, walk down until you find shelter, or you can go off the beaten path and try to uh, make your own shelter somewhere in the woods. I'm going to go off the beaten path and try to make a shelter in the woods. Okay, so there are some very dense trees, and the farther away from the main road you get, the more close together they are. So are you going to try to find a clearing and just... <gasps> Excuse me, throw down a bedroll, or are you going to climb into the trees and try to arrange some sort of nest in the trees? I'm going to go up into the trees. Uh, uh, survival 101, don't stay on the ground. All right, so describe to me how your uh, sleeping situation is. Well, I'm going to find the flat, uh, the, I'm going to find the flattest uh, spot, uh, uh, well, at least the, mo the most com uh, comfortable branch that will support my weight. And I'm going to, uh, I don't think I, one sec. All right. I still have the skin. So I'm going to, I'm going to use that to essentially make a, uh, I'm going to use the pitons to na uh, nail them into the branches and make a sort of a makeshift hammock out of the, uh, out of the skin. All right, if you're trying to construct a hammock, that's definitely going to require a survival check. All right. This is actually a surprisingly comfortable hammock, and you found two extremely sturdy, still green branches of wood to hang the two ends of your hammock on. You plop in, and you're just kind of gently swayed by the, uh, by the, by the breeze. All right, I'm gonna try and keep an eye on the uh, on the cave. See, I uh, uh, see how the uh, see how things are going there. No sooner did you arrange your hammock than did those komodos return back to the cave, um, and immediately return to their goat meat uh, feeding frenzy. You can hear the crunching and the snarling as they devour goats. Um, at least. They and I muttered to myself, well, we say, wonder how the uh, those weird bastards uh, react once I destroyed all their mushrooms. Make it, make a... So are you going to continue surveying from here, or are you going to take a long rest? I'm going to survey for a bit before finally taking a long rest, because the fact of the matter is my character needs it. Nothing particularly hap interesting happens for quite a long time. You're swaying in the breeze so gently you're rocked to sleep and after about uh eight and a half hours uh you hear yourself woken out of a dead sleep by some very monstrous screeching
I, uh, I check the noise. Um, you can see that there are footprints, um, large footprints, uh, leading into the cave. And you can hear with, uh, very guttural, uh, speech, horrid speech. Are you, do you understand, uh, Undercommon? Yep. Who would do such a thing? Our medicinal fungus! He has no idea how long it takes to grow! Uh, uh, he, uh, he uh, snickers to himself. Uh, uh, I wonder how the... Hey, uh, uh, Although he starts to think, wait a minute. How long, uh, how does he think? Uh, he's going to listen in further. These uh, char marks look only a few hours old. He can't have gone far. Fan out! Find him! Flay him! Periwinkle's going to uh, take that cue to uh, take that cue to hide. All right. So, um, in your little hammock, it's uh, tied between two trees. It's not particularly stealthy. I'm going to uh, I'm going to remove the evidence that I was there. All right, since you're already in the trees, you have a couple of options. You can try to flee stealthily and get a, as far away as possible, or stay in your tree and roll for stealth with advantage because you're already high in the air. I am going to I am going to do that one. I'm right. gonna remain stealth in the trees. Hey, look who decided to grace us with their fucking presence two hours late. I am I almost was here. I almost died. Sorry, I was at school. Getting an education, how dare you? He's going to no, Canada no, for wrong, college. Wrong, I'm wrong. sorry. Wrong. I wasn't getting an education. I was playing Doom on the computers because there was a makeup. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Bro, go, ahead. go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Fairy wing. Yeah. I almost died. I, like, I managed to... Uh, I found a group of Komodo dragons. I managed to uh, lose their scent. I lose... Uh, Button up before getting bitten multiple times and reduced to 5 HP. Epic. If they had rolled just slightly higher on their damage, they would have taken him out in one round. You guys <laughs> almost died. But to uh, let, uh, give you an idea, I, destro uh, I destroyed a bunch. Of, uh, I was tasked by a farmer to uh, handle some Komodo dragons, and odds are a group of uh, scraggly bastards that were eating some mushrooms, so I went there, destroyed the mushrooms, and fled. Because of course you did. Well, a rogue that stays put does not stay stay alive very long. Alright, so Periwinkle, I need you to roll for stealth with advantage. Whew, nice. So you stay out of their line of sight for a long period of time, giving your allies to catch up with you. But before they catch up with you, I'm going to introduce them to the goat farmer. Goat. Goat, greatest of all time. I'm kidding, I hate that. All right, so Pyro and Jester, you uh, are walking along the main road when you come across a uh, goat farm that is suspiciously lacking in goats. Uh, there's only one in a pen clearly meant for dozens, and you see a very disgruntled farmer pissing and moaning and whining. Hey, I'm back. Hey, you're back. So, Jester, you can see the rancher. He does not immediately acknowledge you. How do you handle the situation? Uh, so we're just seeing this farm coming up, right? Yep, the uh, road leads directly to a farm. You can ignore the farm and keep on going northwards, or you can stop and interact with the uh, goat farmer. I want to go over to him and say, 
Hey, why do you have a singular gout? What did you say? Why do you have a singular gout? Well, I used to have a hell of a lot more, but them their goddamn Komodo dragons been eating my whole livestock. And what they don't eat, some scraggly some bitches come by and take as tribute. Whatever the hell that means, some bitches. Um, all right. Uh, did you happen to see uh, uh, another drow about the yay hi? Well, yeah, he said he was going to help me with them Komodos, but he's been gone for hours. I don't know where the hell he is, and I'm right pissed. Well, where are the Komodos? Quarter mile up north in a, in the lion's mane cave. Can't miss it. All righty. Thank you for the lead. And kill those goddamn Komodos while you're at it. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Jester and Pyro, as you go up the road, uh, you, get, you get almost a quarter mile up north before you, you can hear uh, grumbling and, and shouting and undercommon. Do the two of you speak undercommon? Let's check. I need to check. Well, my character cheat is on. Oh, well, that was, okay, my mistake. I don't speak undercommon, I speak deep speech. My mistake. Yeah, whoops. I'm pretty sure I don't, but let's let me figure out what I'm doing. My internet browser is taking forever. Be right back. Let me just look at your character sheets. Let's see, Pyro, you speak common, deep speech, druidic, and elvish. Jester, you speak Thank abyssal, you. common, deep speech, and elvish. God damn it. <laughs> None of you have any idea what they're saying. But my uh, my rogue sense is tangle, uh, tangled and going, yeah, I'm hiding. So, Jester and Pyro, you can see some black cloaked figures uh, with uh, leaving very large footprints. Footprints bigger than their actual feet are fanning out and searching the woods, and they're heading your direction. What do you do? Wait, did, wait, I have a question. Did you say footprints that are bigger than their actual Yes, sir, I did. Uh, can I make an inside check to see if I can see if it's an illusion? Uh, that would be um, Arcana, but yes, sir. Two. Like, I don't know. They just have big feet. I don't know. But where... without the zero. So technically, <laughs> technically, it's a nine. I don't know. They have really big feet. What do you want from me? That's all you're getting with a two. Okay, so we're at the we're at the cave. So you are near the cave, and you see these black cloaked figures ominously searching and fanning out. They're about to approach your position. Do you hide or do you greet them? You cut out for a second for me. You see an army of black cloaked ominous figures. They are headed your way. Do you walk up and greet them politely or do you run and hide? Or what do you do? I'm going to be a nice gentleman and go up and greet them. Oh dear god, I see this ending poorly. But, but, just to know, I have one of the balls from a, a bag of tricks in my hands. Alright, so, um, uh, one of the hooded figures, uh, walks up to you, and he, uh, he sees you and he goes, You there! Are you the one who destroyed all the fungus in our cave? Sounds like something I did, but no. And do you have any idea who might have done so? Mm. Maybe. I got... Uh, am I watching this? Uh, they are quite... You are, uh, far too, uh, north to hear or see any of this. You're on the opposite end of the cave. 
and you have about five um, of these hooded black figures getting dangerously close to your hiding spot. One of them is actually leaning up against the tree you're hiding in, just looking around and taking a break. Okay, so, Zeno, tell me what I just missed. We are at the cave. No. You are you near are the not. cave. We are near the cave. Uh, I'm talking to the black figures. Yeah, and I said I wasn't going to... African-American figures. The cloak is black. And Their skin I... is hidden. <laughs> I said I'd go greet them as well. And what about you there, Druid? Do you have any idea who might have burned our mushrooms? You look like the type for sabotage. Well, as I am a fan of burning, uh, I have not, nor know any information about your burnt mushrooms. I would like you both to make, um... Uh, either persuasion or deception checks against its insight check to see if you can convince him that uh, you have nothing to do with it and you have no idea who's guilty. Deception, please. Yep, deception. Dang it, wrong character, sorry. Thank God. Fortissimo! I like the name. Thanks, he's my um, Warforged Bard in another campaign. Bro, that, that like, name is on the, in his chest, and he's constantly very loud. That name reminds me of something. Before you actually answer, I know what it reminds me of. What does it remind you of? <laughs> Damn it! I think you know exactly who's guilty. And if you don't tell me, we're going to have problems. It was him. I point to Pyro. He <laughs> burns all the stuff. Can I point at him and we both make deception checks? Fucking sure. Why not? Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> so you're both guilty. Uh, look, look, if I burned it down, I wouldn't be scared for, for a bunch of you. Like, you know it. And if I burned it down, I'd be laughing at you right now. You look like you're ready to laugh at me as it is, so that's not a very Just convincing argument. Well, hear me out. Have you thought that maybe it's not... The, the one person you have because how convenient would that be maybe it was one of you I point into the crowd of black faces <gasps> my god <laughs> oh for christ's sake I'll allow it <laughs> yes roll deception can I, can I help him and give him advantage you absolutely can well who knows? Maybe that man got a point. Yes! Ah. Fuck! This is so dumb! I hate everything about this! <laughs> <laughs> we won the system. I knew it was you, Sneaky Ted! How do you think you got the name Sneaky Ted to begin with? And he opens fire with his crossbow. Sneaky Ted takes a, a crossbow bolt to the throat and goes down hard. Jester snorts. I'm glad we got that set. You guys, I found the culprit. It was Sneaky Ted all along. He lived up to his name. <laughs> All of the uh, black robe figures gather around Sneaky Ted's corpse, nod in agreement, and go, Oh, it was definitely Sneaky Ted. <laughs> we just I, I... made an innocent wonder. Periwinkle, you see a, um, a black cloaked figure approach the ones near your tree, and they go, We found the culprit! It was Sneaky Ted all along! That son of a bitch! They all leave. 
Who's Sneaky Ted? Before, uh, he's gonna think that was way too close. Like, uh, uh, but, uh, alright, he's gonna, uh, go, uh, go ahead and see if he can actually salvage any goat blood. Okay, as the cloaked figures disperse back into the woods from which they manifested, you see that the, uh, the goats are horrendously, like, torn apart, but there's still plenty of meat and blood available. Um, you would, uh, but the meat appears to be infected with their saliva, so the meat would have to be cleaned with something pretty powerful, because otherwise it is toxic as fuck. Uh, Periwinkle gets an idea. He's going to take the infected, uh, infected meat and put, uh, put it in his pack. And then he's going to take the blood and, uh, actually, wait, let me see if I have anything to put it in. Uh, so have all the black figures left from where me and Pyro are? Unless you to continue, unless you continue to interact with them, they're all gonna pack up their shit and go home, convinced that Sneaky Ted was guilty all along. When they're going home, I'd like to follow them, but once they're a good distance away, I want to look up our own and say, Pray. "Once they're a good distance away, you want to what?" I want to like questioningly ask Periwinkle to. Okay, so as they leave, you approach the cave, and um, uh, you can see that there's about five Komodo dragons walking back towards the uh, um, the cave entrance. You can see Periwinkle is waiting for you, and uh, you can see that these dragons are about to come over and fuck some shit up. How big are these Komodo dragons? I have a, a two-scale picture. All right. So, the, you have a picture of the goat compared to the size of a man, and here you have a picture of the Komodo dragon compared to the same size goat. Alrighty. And there's seven of them, right? Five. Are they all pretty grouped up? Uh, yes, they're, uh, um, the five of them are probably covering maybe ten square feet. All right. I just one second. But uh, the all three right. of you have come together as a group, so you, you can all interact with each other. Well, where the hell were you guys? Damn, walking by a goat place. They said that you were... Uh investigating like some komodo dragons we came we uh killed sneaky ted sneaky ted inadvertently but we still killed him. yeah but the fact of the matter is help me uh, help me get some uh some of this blood i have an idea all right i kind of want to kill these komodo dragon lizard thing well we'll, uh, we'll deal with uh, uh well the fact of the matter is i i i tried to uh Find a way to actually get the uh, get. But regardless, like, uh, like, uh, help me get some of his blood. We're gonna hide. But the fact of the matter is, I don't. Like, I, like, I personally got uh, jumped by these things, and I almost got killed. He points at the at the scar tissue. Pyro, you are a druid. You are well versed in survival and how to slaughter an animal quickly and cleanly, and you're able to get a pretty sizable poundage of meat and blood. Um, without having to make a check. But as you do so, you can hear the snarling of the Komodos as they round the corner, and they they look and sound aggressive. I want to cast Hypnotic Pattern on them. Making me Google shit. I, I can post the text for you if you want. Uh, please do. I love these utility spells, but there's so many to keep track of. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
Da, 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 da. Sorry. What? Was... Okay, so a 30 foot cube of range is full of color. Each creature in the area must make a whiz or become charmed. Oh shit. Yeah, I, I almost, I, I almost uh, petrified them. So that uh, wait, they were able to get uh, to uh, to use their mouths. Um, you tied their their mouths so fucking shut uh, that there's no way they're getting out of them without uh, clawing at them for quite some time. So their mouths are actually still fucking shut. All right. Yeah, I wasn't able to get... I didn't get the Orb of Lethargy, so it's probably just still... Yeah, the Orb of Lethargy is still fucking out in the middle of the wilderness, unattended. Wait, the Orb... Like, yeah, the, the Orb that the horse thing... Yeah. I'm rolling Wait, for that's the... Still in, that's, that's in my chest. Well, you guys weren't here, so I gave it to him. So, I don't want to hear about it. Anyway. And didn't you just put it on the floor? I used it as a trap. And you just left it? I was like, I was thinking that uh, I had to keep it there and uh, see if it petrified completely. They did not. I haven't been able to go and pick it up. All right. So I'm rolling. So was for... that the same? Yes, I'm rolling for the Komodo dragons as a group because there's five of them, um, and they, uh, as a group, they succeed the wisdom save and are not charmed. You can see them snarling and moving closer. If you don't act fast, they will attack. I, I'm gonna hide. <laughs> All right. Well, might as well do this. I yeet one of my balls at them. Yeet those balls. What kind of ball? Uh, the balls from my tan bag of tricks. Okay. Roll for what spawns. That's a three. A baboon. A baboon! Periwinkle, you melt into the shadows. Jester, you conjure a baboon. Pyro, what are you doing? Uh, there's five Komodo dragons. Yes, sir, there are. They want to attack us, or who do they want to attack? I, I literally just... They're out for blood, and you contain blood. Oh, they want us? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. The closest one to me, Fire Scorching Ray. Okay. Sounds roll for like it. combat. Let's have everybody roll for initiative. Once I start it. Hey, I, I actually DM'd a game, uh, like a text game on D, uh, on uh, Avray, so I can actually make my baboon join. Nice. Twenty three, not twenty. <clears throat> I'm just letting you guys know if you didn't notice. Not twenty. <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you add your baboon? There you go. Baboon add. All right, yeah. Pyro leaping into goddamn action. Oh, just question. Uh, the um, actually no, we'll figure that out. I got scorching ray, but I'll shoot two at it. If it doesn't die, I'll shoot. Go for it. Okay, so the first attack hits, and you hit one that was already wounded. Um. Do, 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 do. So the first one you hit dies immediately. You tell me if those hit or not. <laughs> no. Like, not even a little bit do they hit. Okay, so only the first. Okay. 
So uh, you managed to kill one of them with your Scorching Ray and your other two Rays miss. Any other actions you would like to take, my good sir? That's it. Mm. No, it's not worth summoning, my boy. All right, that's going to make it Jester's turn. What you got for us, buddy? All right, let me just go check something. I am going to crown of Vandis on the Komodo dragons. Please make another with with. Ten. It fails. Oh snap! I'm gonna imagine that one of those paper Burger King hats are uh, crowns on is on it. <laughs> I will Google it. Uh, okay, so the uh, the target is charmed for one minute, basically. Uh, twisted crown of jagged iron appears on their head. Nice, nice. The charmed target must use its action before moving on each of its turn to make a melee attack against a creature other than itself that you mentally choose. Well, damn. So, uh, yeah. I did that, and I end my turn. You end your turn? Uh, there's a problem. Huh? It says one humanoid. Ah. Uh. Look at that! So it does! I'll let you use a different okay. spell. Your character would be smart enough to know that in advance, so I'll give you a different attack. Right. Let me just look at my spells to look yeah, I got. I'm well, not gonna punish you for an over. Sorry, go ahead. Now, while I don't, I got. Uh, this one text uh, RP group uh, didn't pan out. I at least managed to get the some spells added to Avray. Nice. Yeah, like I had a uh, guy made a. Uh, a wild magic sorcerer uh, got, and it didn't have chaos orb and they just handed me the uh, uh, the bit that added it to added it to it. hey guess what hey guess what it's kind of get funky suggestion baby suggestion yes I'm going to suggest to one of the Komodo dragons to go away <laughs> okay so, please make ways. Uh, let me read it really quickly, just in case there's another doesn't work on Komodo Dragons um, caveat. It said creature. Creature within range that can hear and understand you. It can't understand me? It's a Komodo Dragon. What do you think? Nah. Just, I mean, just, screw this. Dissonant whispers. <laughs> um, uh, make another whiz say. Whiz. Whiz, whiz, whiz. I'm gonna read it. You never know. It might say any creature except for Komodo dragons or some bullshit. One creature of your choice within range that can hear. Okay. No caveats to this one. Yeah. Yeah. If you look it up online, you figure out that Komodo dragons can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Komodo dragons have ears, all right? They've got stupid lizard ears, but yeah, they can hear. Yeah. They got ear make, holes. Make it the same. Eight. You fail. Take 14. Oh, snap. Oh, he's hurting. So as you uh, whisper malicious words into its brain, it does not comprehend them. But this, the psychic uh, damage just melts its fucking brain. And it starts to bleed from its ears. It looks like it could die if you sneezed on it too hard. It's free real estate. 
Okay, nerd with the fucking Komodo <laughs> dragon biology. Get this shit out of my goddamn... Oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, Komodo dragons, uh, these are hungry Komodo dragons. So does anyone have hunger as a flaw or quality? I have it as a quality. Okay, so you... um, Well, fuck. So you should have actually taken half damage from all of their attacks. I completely fucking forgot about it. Oh. So you would have been fine. I forgot to mention that earlier. But yes, all the monsters you encounter have one of these flaws or qualities. And I apologize if I forget to specify. The, like, inside of one of the ears that come out of the I'm just going to say, You suck. <laughs> uh, Depending on what, what's the... So, Jester and Pyro, do either of you have uh, Hungary as a flower quality? Uh, also, uh, I'm going to say, hey, do something cool. Give her, uh, give him Bardic's inspiration and then my turn. Bardic and me? Of course. Okay. Inti next. Inti. Inti. Periwinkle. Periwinkle is gonna, uh, and he's gonna take advantage of this, and he's gonna take a uh, take one of his arrows, and he's gonna fire it at the one that has ble uh, has a bleeding brain. All right, roll it. And a D all right. Well, that's a dead bitch. If I've ever seen a dead bitch be a bitch. Wow, what a bitch! Is he even like a actual dragon? Is only a komodo dragon. I like how you add the um uh, sneak attack damage <laughs> just to add insult to injury. So as you uh, you crouch down really low, fire the bow, and it goes in its mouth and out the end of its tail. Gank. Okay. I am going to act with that. I am going to cunning action hide. Roll it. Make sure to add your D8 to this so you can hide extra gooder. Why? Hide extra gooder. Maybe the lizards have a passive perception of 17. Um. Do, 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 do. Let, me, let me check really quick. So the baboon is under my command. Yes. Okay, so you, Periwinkle, you're confident you're out of the line of sight of Komodos. Plus, they've got these two chuckle fucks to deal with, so they're not actively looking for you. It's the baboon's turn. What's uh, Baboonicus uh, going to do? Baboonicus the seventh is going to go up to one of the Komodo dragons. Is there, like, a weak one right now? Uh, there was, but he's dead now. The others are healthy. All right. Baboonicus the seventh is going to smack a Komodo. Smack that Komodo. With his teeth, of course. Of course. Dude, Komodo. <laughs> Dude, baboons have fucking monster teeth. Yeah. Monster teeth that deal zero damage. Uh, Wait, uh, what? Look. <laughs> look at these fucking twofers. Look at that shit. Yeah. Then what? <laughs> I, I command. I command Baboonicus to try to ride one of the Komodo dragon. <laughs> So you see Baboonicus bite the Komodo, but the Komodo scales are so fucking hard, he can't pierce its skin. Uh, but not to be defeated, he tries to mount the son of a bitch. Roll athletics. Alright. Well, let's see, what's the monkey at? <laughs> athletics, so uh, that would be strength. Um... Crap! I, I want to see that roll. Beat a 21 with your neck. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so the Komodo dragon uh, sees the baboon, 
trying to mount it and just nopes the motherfucker in the crotch with the tail whip. It doesn't do damage, but it's very humiliating. Uh, I command him to scream. He screams. And he ends his turn. <laughs> okay. God, I love D&D. &D. Alright. Alright, it's time for the Komodo Dragons. And uh, they are le pissed. And their mouths are tied shut, pissing them off further. They do have multi-attack, one with their bite, which is tied up, and one with their claws, meaning they can only functionally attack a total of three times between the three of them. They are all going to this goddamn baboon. They are, they're gonna eat it. Uh, try to hit the baboon. I dare you. Dare accepted? Watch they all do. Watch none of them do. But it's funny as hell because I because I have this mental image of the of the uh, bad boy going making a scream and uh, but um, you find two don't hit, guess. but one does. All right, the one that hits Jesus. What? No. Does five damage to him? I'm guessing. Let me reroll that. There Either way, he dies. Uh, Baboons have like two health. He deals four damage with its claw attack. He has two health. Yeah, baboons aren't very strong. They're zero CR. With a dismissive bitch slap, he cracks the he slashes the baboon's throat, dropping it to the ground dead. Poor baboonicus, you are greatly appreciated. <laughs> Pyro. Avenge Babunicus. Hey. I look at the murder of Babunicus and I'm just like How could you kill Babunicus? He was like father Ah <laughs> uh, yes, you and Babunicus were such close friends, you knew each other so well. All right, so 16 to hit, 11 fire damage. Whew, that's hot. So you uh, cast your firebolt and you scorch the fuck out of one of their backs. You can see exposed ribs and vertebrae, but it is clinging to life aggressively. And it is not dead. For Babunicus. You say, for Babunicus, and end your turn. Any other way of ending my turn would have been... An insult to Babunicus, obviously. Jester, it's you your turn. You killed my baby! I, I stabbed the Komodo dragon that killed Babunicus. Stab him! Let me see that, that hit. Thirteen? That's his armor class, and are you attacking the one that's already wounded? I'm attacking the one that uh, killed him. So the one that was wounded. Yeah. You Does successfully avenge Babunicus with your rapier, piercing its brain with your rapier. Yes, shithead! I am my turn. Periwinkle. You are hidden. What do you do? I will... I uh... Can do the uh, I will snicker before uh, launching another arrow at the one that isn't hurt. All right, fire away! And I think you have advantage because you are hidden. You also have a D8. D8. Not needed. Hot damn! That's a dead bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and he also multiplies his. Uh... Sneak attack. Epic. So roll three, three more d6. Yeah. Um. Uh, sneak attack is only rolled once. No, oh, no. 
For advantage, you double it. Yeah, you do. It, he got a crit, so yeah, he's doubling that to an 18, and that is a dead bitch. Yeah. I shoot it through the eye, and it pierces the brain. Thunk! It is dead, and it drops straight down. Cutting action, hide. Roll it. You speak like a true. I love it. Periwinkle's not stupid. <laughs> Babunicus's corpse twitches slightly. Now it's the Komodo's turn, and they are reduced to one. And he is not backing down, because he's a goddamn Komodo dragon, and they don't back down for shit. You see the Komodo dragon, you know, you know, sort of walk in place for a bit, eyeing Jester with fire in its eyes and, and death in its heart, and it charges at you, claws bared, and it goes in for an A uh, to slash... Your Achilles tendon. It has disadvantage, by the way, at striking at my Achilles. Pourquoi? Because I have my displacement, this robe of displacement on. Oh mon dieu, tu parles le français, Zina? Ah, it misses. It, uh, you see this uh, creature charge, its theme music plays in the background, it remembers the power of friendship, misses completely and tumbles to the, to the ground as it misses its strike. You can suck my dick, you stupid lizard. That would be disgusting. <laughs> Byro, what do you want to do? I'm just... Going for an old fireball, man. It's, it's, I think. No, I have other... Are you sure that fireball is the most tactically advantageous thing to do? I mean, what about those other spells you have? Uh, okay. I would, say the best sure. thing do, I would say the best thing to do is to hold off on him since there's only really one left. No, come on. No, I said. For... Obviously, you must use your most powerful attack on this one lone Komodo. Fireball. Are you guys dumb? Fireball. I clearly said Firebolt. Fireball. 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 I'm fireball. just kidding. Fireball. Fire. <laughs> Roll that Fireball. One. 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 Yeah, I was using a Firebolt. That does actually hit its armor class. You scorch no. its back, flay some skin, but it is still alive. Are you guys... Why would I use a Fireball? Because Eat my Fireball. Ass. Eat my ass, you stupid Komodo <laughs> dragon. I, I, I'm using a vicious mockery on. Uh, whiz save, right? Yep, whiz save. What are you saying to it? Eat my ass, you stupid Komodo dragon. I know, I did that on purpose. Sure you did, buddy. <laughs> sure. 16. Dang it! I present to you my middle finger, good sir. Uh, just close on a hole. Got anything else? I am my, I am my turn. Haha! <laughs> Periwinkle! Kill it, Periwinkle. Periwinkle! Periwinkle is gonna pull out his short sword and go for a stab. Charge! Poof, it's the last one. How do you want to end it? Uh, as, uh, I whisper uh, in his ear uh, as I am about to do the stab. Oh my wa And I stab it through uh, I stab it through the top of the head. Alright, the blade pierces the skull and pins it to the, to the ground, blood trickling down the blade of your sword. The Komodo dragon writhes in pain. It's a uh, brain sending random electrical signals to its body. It thrashes, bleeds, and finally falls still and silent. That was for the uh, that was for the bites. I'm gonna take my I'm gonna uh, take my rope back. All right, you do so. 
you have chopped the rope up into into uh, more manageable bits, so you've got segments of rope now. Yep, that's God. <sighs> oh, that, that that is definitely uh, one headache removed. And Power Winkle gets an idea. How about we uh, we help them make some? Uh, got, we're, how about we go scout out those uh, those uh, 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 the black uh, things? Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you. Do you require healing? I'm like, I'm fine. Like, I, like, uh, early, like, uh, earlier I might have uh, needed it because I kind of got bit, but I'm fine. Well, uh, let's continue on. All like, right. Alrighty. I put my, like, I clean my uh, short sword and put it away. And I go, yep. oh, before that, I, I go uh, over to the Orb of Lethargy and pick it up. All right. You find it easily and put it back in your inventory. And I go and get the skin as well, uh, skin the piton since I, uh, can, like, since... I'm gr growing rather attached to the skin. All right. So as you gather your supplies, uh, you said you're going to uh, hunt down those uh, cloaked figures? Yep. Well, it's been lovely, but I I think I'll have to go now. Uh, see you guys up ahead? I, I got to go, guys. Or I'll be with you in like either 20, min 20 or 30 minutes or so, or see you next. Boo! I have to go to my dad's house. Can you wait and leave? Boo! I gotta go to my dad's house. Just get Not the worst parents. See you. I'll see you later, Jester. See ya. The worst parent sucks. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, I would not go, but I'm legally obligated to go to my father's house. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he had. I like how he came right back just to defend himself. Yeah, he's just like, I don't want this, but legally I have to. Sure, All convenient right. excuse. All right, but Periwinkle is gonna go. Jeez. Oh, like, uh, seriously, the fact of the matter is, if I, like, uh, like, uh, those things were a pain in the butt to, uh, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to run back to the cave, I'm going to go look, see if there's uh, uh, anything of interest I can grab. Uh, well, you have destroyed all of the mushrooms, you have killed the Komodos, and aside from that, at least at first glance, it appears to be an ordinary cave. Can I look deeper? See if there are other things. What check would you like to make? Investigation. Go for it. May I help him? I have bardic. I still have the bardic inspiration. Yep. All right. You successfully discover it is an ordinary cave. And with a 28, you successfully discover it is an ordinary cave. Hell yeah, bro. There's nothing to it. All right. Uh. All right. All the... Uh. All right. Uh, well, with uh, but uh, feeling defeated, I I I head out of the cave, going well. I shouldn't be expected. I kind of destroyed everything. All right. Would you like to continue northward, or would you like to follow the uh, black uh, clo uh, cloaked figures? Follow the black clo uh, cloaked figures. I shall accompany him. All right, you see the uh, the cloaked figures are um uh, 
uh, wandering north uh, northwest, and they're uh, weaving their way through trees, and you see them passing through what look like uh, trees, but you you are able to deduce that they are false illusory trees. Um, I would like you all to make stealth checks to follow them without getting caught. Yeah, this is Periwinkle's thing. What about you, Pyro? Are you stealthing along? All I heard was I. Uh, try again, Pyro. We didn't hear you. Uh, he'll text if it was important. But we'll assume that he's just lagging behind for now. But um, uh, Periwinkle, as you uh, stealthily follow along, you see them uh, weave through these uh, false trees. And uh, you follow them to a, uh, a vast open lake. And you can see upon this lake is a mysterious fi uh, a figure holding a, an oar standing on a raft. And this uh, ore is on fire. Uh, ah, finally. Okay, do you stealth? Yes. You're I both stealth along with you. You are both able to successfully stealth along following the cloaked figures. The cloaked figures gather around a massive open lake. And you see this man with a burning oar steering a, uh, a uh, boat closer to the shore to greet them. Hmm. I'm going to I'm going to watch. They have a long protracted conversation in undercom, which none of you speak. I don't even have the spell. Uh, uh, Periwinkle's gonna, uh, he's gonna scan around, see if he can find a stew pot or something. A stew pot? Uh, sure. Um, the only thing, um, there isn't much around here, but you do see, um, uh, a few, a few yards to the west, there does look to be a relatively large hut, uh, that's on stilts to keep it above the waterline. Okay, uh, coming to... Okay. I'm going to check the water, see if it's... Uh, uh, see if it's safe to get in. What are you using to test it? Are you dipping toe in, or what are you doing? I'm going to... Uh, hmm. I'm going to gently lower a section of my rope. As you gently lower a section of your rope, the instant the rope touches uh, the water, it starts to burn. And you can see this green acid start to crawl up a couple inches up the rope, eating it, dissolving it. I let go of it. You sacrifice a section of rope as the uh, rope gets dissolved by the acid. This is even more concentrated than when you first arrived. I'm going to try out the skin. You're going to try out the skin? Yeah, I'm going to stock, I'm going to hack off a section, a uh, small piece, and drop it in. Of the goat skin, right? The, uh, no, not the goat skin. The, uh, the apathy creature skin. Ah, yes. Um, as you throw that skin in the water, it does not dissolve. It just floats along the top. Hmm. All right, I'll at least get them somewhere, but the fact of the matter is I can't exactly do much with just uh, I got one screw up and and I become a yeah, I get dissolved like a uh, like I get dissolved like he does not have a, a, a uh, he thinks to himself before moving back and he relays this information to Pyro. Uh, 
Uh, uh, why are you even trying this? Okay, so, uh, well, the fact of the matter is, I, I got, we got to do something. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, although we do have... Uh, he he shuts up uh, halfway through his sentence. Let's go talk to the goat, uh, the goatman. No, 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 no. What were you gonna say? Uh, I got... Well, the fact of the matter is, we can't exactly go across it with the way we, uh, way we are now. We're pro and we're go uh, can so we're probably gonna need a boat. So I'm. So I'm thinking maybe we go talk to the goatman. Well, I have no idea what's going on here, so I'll just agree with you. Let's go ahead and do it. All right. With the uh, cave cleared of Komodo dragons and the uh, cloaked figures gathered around the lakefront, we're able to return to the goat farmer uh, unencumbered and without issue. Uh, you see he is, uh, he is looking at his goat. He's looking at the depressing lack of other goats. Wondering out loud how he's going to breed more goats. Well, Periwinkle, well, I'll say good, uh, good sir. Uh, we deal, uh, we de uh, dealt with uh, them there. Uh, uh, like, uh, varmints. Well, that bear's good to hear. It'll be nice to be left alone, left in peace. Now I just gotta figure out how the hell to get more goats in the middle of this post-apocalyptic wasteland. I'm sure there's a vendor somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so about that boat. The boat is yours. Uh, I'll tell you right where it is. If you go, if you go up towards the lake, straight north, like I have it hidden away in this little alcove. Yeah, you, you have to be actively looking for it, or you would walk right past it. I've covered it with twigs and leaves so nobody steals it. It's right on the shoreline directly to the right of the main road. Appreciate it. Okay. Now, okay. Appreciate it. Okay. He, uh, he tilts his head, before, inclines his head before he heads off. All right. So now that you have the location, you can see as you return to the shore, um, the, uh, there is a uh, boat that the uh, the man with the burning ore was on is now complete with five cloaked figures and what looks to be a black mastiff and they are sailing uh, northwards just barely out of sight you only notice them because of the the torch on top of the burning ore well there's not really much they can do about uh, like about the uh, boat because uh, they don't there's nothing they can use to sabotage it Hmm. Wait a minute. Uh, God, how far out is it? Um, this lake is massive, hundreds of feet wide, and you see they are sailing northwards. Like uh, then they're leaving your line of sight. Okay, so they're. Uh, guy whispered to Pyro, "How far does that firebolt reach?" Pyro, you still with us? Uh, you estimate that their boat is probably about 300 feet away. Damn. Uh, uh, yeah, he wouldn't be able to reach it. Keep uh, skating. What was that? So 150. My fireball can reach one. Yeah, it gets a bit too far for uh, what my character, what I had in mind. But... Okay, well, let's go find the. Let's try and find the uh, the boat. Being told exactly where it is, you find it in no time. You disturb the twigs and leaves and uh, brush aside a uh, rowboat. So, 
Becca, you ready? What? We're about to cross. We're about to cross the uh, cross it. Well, as ready as I can be. All right. Periwinkle gets in, like, uh, and along with Pyro, and uh, shoves off. All right. As you, um, as the, uh, the twinkle of the, uh, torch-wielding, um, sailor disappears northwards, you sail along, uh, with the current of the lake heading northwards. You see the lake narrowing into a river. As you flow with the, uh, the river's current, the river itself seems to glow gold, red, and pink as it reflects the brilliant colors of a fiery sunset permanently frozen in the sky. A moment of peace is enwrapped within beauty of the day's last hours. That moment ends as two flat bottom, um, or, <clears throat> excuse me, that moment ends as a man in a, a boat appears, um, within your peer view. It's as if he manifests from nowhere, uh, quickly settling, um, in front of your own vessel. Uh, half dozen hazy, shadowy silhouettes uh, gaze at you from their uh, their boat in eerie silence, with a gaunt figure and a skeletal face stands at the helm of his vessel. Yeah, yeah okay. I got Periwinkle. Yeah, there's no point in trying to hide. He's in a boat. Um, the, this wretched skeletal creature speaks. You are nearing the castle of the Onyx Lich. Turn back at once, or we will be forced to drag you down and show you exactly how deep this acid river is. Uh, are you a uh, he's on a raft, right? Uh, he is on a uh, rowboat similar to your own. Robots are flamm flammable, right? Uh, the boat is able to survive in the acid river, so it must have some strange quality. You've never tried to light one on fire before. Okay, uh, yeah. Periwinkle is... says... Uh, mutters to... Uh, uh, mutters to Pyro, what can, uh, uh, what can you do? That's the guy with a fire orb, right? You know. I don't know what you're talking. The fire orb. That's that's the guy with a fire orb, right? Oh, fire orb! Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tip of his uh, or is on fire. Yes, sir. Maybe I can flames and maybe set him on fire or something. Okay. Uh... All right, uh, I'm gonna try and keep uh, keep their attention. If you try and you try and set fire to their uh, to their boat, and we're gonna try and move away as fast as we can. Because the fact of the matter is, we're kind of stuck in the same thing. If we if, if he destroys our boat. Oh, oh, wait, I have a question. You happen to have any spells that maybe let him hear stuff? No. Ah, uh, okay. So, hmm. Nope. Okay. Uh, all right. Periwinkle's gonna try and distract that. Uh, distract him. Uh, uh, now, let's not be so hasty. We can we can be neighbors. Like, uh, uh, okay. Um, my my name is Heck. Uh, I'm trying to think of a name on the spot. It's not exactly easy. My, uh, uh, my name is Nasdaq. Uh, uh, this is my uh, indentured, ser uh, indentured servant, uh, 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 Capperwall. Uh, uh, what's your name? My name is Moreneloth. I'm the guardian of this river. 
I meant to keep people such as yourself as far away from the castle as possible. Is it a magical flame or is it not? Uh, it says you choose a non-magical flame. Um, yeah, I'm checking if it's magical or not. Um, let me actually see if it says one way or the other uh, on the sheet, because I'm not actually sure. Okay. I'm going to assume it's an ordinary torch and therefore non-magical. It does not specify. All right, great. <laughs> uh, hmm, that's um. Uh, do I have any idea who they work for? Ah, uh, he just told you that his job is to protect Black Tier Castle from people like you. All right. Hmm. Think of a way to like make him think his boss, his boss is saying yes to us going. I try to uh, like make a check. I'm sorry, my phone died on me, so I got. Uh, Zeno, I try to make a simple shape, which is a yes check, and. I try to convince the god that maybe his god is, his boss is giving us What? I, okay, I'll try to say what I'm doing in chat. You want to make a check to uh, convince him that your boss allowed him to pass? Why would he even entertain the option when he's been given explicit orders? What are you doing to convince him? You're on very, you're not standing on a very solid leg here. Okay, okay. I, I'll try and make a deception check. Look, we have been specifically to come here. I don't think that's going to work, Pyro. I'm going to rule that you cannot do that, because he was given strict orders not I to let anyone pass. Alright. Alright, got Uh... Hey... Uh, going to... Uh, the fuck? Uh, oh... Hey, uh, God, what was your character? What was the character's name again? Uh, uh, my phone died around that point. He pronounces it Mareneloth, and I posted its spelling in the chat. Oh, Mareneloth, like, we, like, uh, I imagine you don't uh, have a whole, you don't get, all, get to talk to a whole lot of people. I have my servants. And he waves his hand at the five shadowy figures behind him. Oh. Uh, well, I, I, I imagine that gets boring after a while. Uh, so, how about we just have a conversation right here? I'm, I'm not going to move. Uh, can, we can just talk. You're starting to annoy me. What do you want? I'll just... I uh, just talk and uh, guys, whisper to Pyro, uh, and I, and I nudge uh, Pyro to uh, to get uh, to get on with uh, what initially had in mind.
you know, the fireboat, the boat set on fire. His boat. Hello? Pyrotechnics, that's what he's uh, using. Uh, no, wait, that is control flames. Uh, I think the, ma the, the, the flame that he's using is magical. Hey, I'm back. Okay, I think the flames you're trying to control is magical. I don't think that's going to work. So, but, uh, but yeah. Okay, he's nudging uh, Pyro's foot to just go uh, set fire to the damn to the damn boat. <sighs> well, produce fame. Produce flame, firebolt, and control flames are all cantrips. So if he wants to create some uh, some fire, he can definitely do so. But we just got to hear from Pyro and hear him speak, which we can't do because his internet is shit. Okay, uh, Pyro, just type uh, type what you're trying to say in the back in back in general. No, we did not hear you. Speak and be heard, or type, one or the other. I would recommend typing. Okay, you were able to distinguish the fire from the other non-fires? Oh, extinguish, I think you mean. So, you cast Control Flame to extinguish the fire. There is still this permanent sunlight casting a light everywhere, so you can all still easily see. I got... Uh, Perry Winkle can go. Oh, jeez! Like it looks like. Uh, I'll get. No, you can't, Adora. <laughs> but anyway, I got. He says. I think he's trying. Uh, he can only. Uh, he can only stall for so long. Do something. As you extinguish the fire on his oar, he will wave his hand and immediately conjure a fresh flame. More irritated than actually offended. Oh dear God, he, this is going to end poorly. We're in the blast zone! Well, it's a 20 foot radius and he can cast it quite a ways away. So he can kind of, you know, aim it. But we're still close to the guy! Let's see, okay, so... Pyro, uh... F uh fireball has a range of 150 feet and a 20-foot radius, so where are you casting it from? Because you guys are only 10 feet away from their boat, so if you cast fireball 10 feet away, you will be swallowed in flames. I mean, it kind of sounds like you just want to engulf yourself in fire. Which is an incredibly stupid thing when you're on a boat!
I can't be the only one to do all the thinking. Unless you specify, I'm going to rule that you catch yourself in the, within the uh, the fire, the radius of the fireball, and then we're going to have a very crispy time. Yeah, like, and even if we do, like, even if we don't die from the fire, we're going to die from the acid. Your Discord is lagging. Well, fuck you. <laughs> Uh, I can't be the only one doing the thinking because if I end up, I, guess, I, I don't have all the answers. And God damn it, I'm very limited on what I can do. You're, uh, you're our, you're our portable nuke. I'm just a bullshit artist. So, Pyro, are you saying that you cast the fireball 20 feet away from you so that your enemies are caught in the radius, but you yourselves are not? Or are you casting it, like, right at the fucking... You said you'll do it right on the edge of their fucking boat. Okay, so you're all getting burned. No! I can beat it. Dude, the edge of their boat is less than 20 feet away, you specified that twice, you're all gonna have to make tax saves. <laughs> the other side, the other side, it's a long, it's a, it's a rowboat, not a fucking cruise liner. <laughs> if you... Yeah, yeah, Periwinkle is gonna, uh, he's gonna make a, uh, take his chances with the acid while throwing the, uh, the uh, skin over himself. Okay. Make a acrobatics chip to wrap the skin around yourself and jump into the acid without getting horrendously maimed. In midair, you, you leap into the air, wrap it around yourself, and crash into the water. You float along the water, slowly being uh, pushed aside as Pyro just casts fucking fireball at the edge of the boat that's only 10 feet away like a dumbass. Let me make death deck saves for everybody. <laughs> All right, what's the deck save on this dude? Saving throw, dex, plus five. Okay. Yeah, I ain't playing this is retarded. I'm sorry. I'm not sure if he means the... Uh... He's rage quitting. Because if he's just mad that I'm giving him shit about the fireball, like, I can easily just... I, I'm, I'm only really messing with him. I know what he means. But if he legitimately can't communicate because of Discord, that pretty much fucks him over. Oh, I didn't mean to actually offend him. Oh, fuck. Alright. Like the, like, but the fact of the matter is, I'm like, uh, no! And I, uh, yeah, because the skin is my, uh, like, 
It is basically my contingency plan. Okay. So, um... <clears throat> Marinoloth, tired of your stalling, um, uh, casts a, a, a fireball, but you wrap yourself in skin and jump overboards. The fireball creates this tidal wave of, uh, of flaming force, flinging you and the rowboat uh, southwards with a massive wave. Uh, okay. Oh, no, no. It's like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, I'm gonna die here. I'm gonna need you to make a constitution saving throw as you come crashing back down to earth, flung onto the ground by uh, acid waves. As you fall from 30 feet in the air, you land on your neck, cranking it, taking 17 points of bludgeoning damage. The rowboat uh, splits into three pieces beside you. It's not completely destroyed, but it will require repairs. Oh, jeez. Periwinkle. There's not really much he can do, so he's going to try... Uh, so is the skin still uh, still in one piece? Uh, the skin is miraculously still intact. Oh, gee, this is... Uh, I, I will still say this is probably my... Uh, the, uh, the MVP of this campaign. <laughs> this little skin that I... I, 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 I try and pull, it, uh, pull the pieces back together. As I limp back to the shore. The pieces of the skin or the pieces of the boat? Pieces of the boat. The boat has been split into about three pieces, but you are able to um, use the re remaining rope you have to kind of tie the chunks together and sulk away in shame. Uh, you can see the uh, Marinovoth cro crosses his arms, tilts his head back, and laughs maniacally, his laughter echoing across the lake. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, okay. but... With your friends mysteriously gone, a frontal assault seems just about impossible. You'll have to think of a different strategy. Okay. Okay, I'm muttering, uh, muttering uh, obscenities under my breath is the fact that that is the that fireball. Like I'm glad the like, uh, I'm gonna thank the like, I'm gonna, like, uh, after getting back to like, I'm gonna go all the way back to shore, and I'm gonna uh, still mut uh, muttering obscenities. I do my best uh, Yosemite Sam impression, and uh, uh, I I'm gonna. Do my best to repair the boat while while being happy that the skin is being uh, is being as helpful as it is because he feels like that's the only one he can really rely on at this point. All right, I don't think you have the mending cantrip, do you? I am a like, I am a rogue, not a like I am a mastermind, not a like not a uh, not a arcane trickster. Do you have tinker tools, wood carving tools, any tool proficiency that could help you repair a boat? That would be wonderful. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go back to the freaking uh, goat man and see if he can actually do, uh, help me out. All right. As you uh, as you drag this rowboat uh, across the terrain, through the cave, and all the way back uh, to the, um, uh, the goat farmer... You are exhausted, covered in acid and skin. Your boat is shattered. You're feeling uh, it's not a good look. And the farmer immediately picks up on the fact that things did not go well and goes, I told you it was a bad idea, but you went out and went there and done did it like an idiot. I told you not to. Like I'm, uh, I'm still doing my Yosemite Sam impression. I look at him now. Can you, can you, uh, I can repair a boat? Sure, I can repair a boat. 
But why should I? I gave you a boat with good intentions and you gone and done wrecked it. Well, I was trying to, uh, to uh, smooth talk my way through it, but he had no, uh, he was not trying, he was not wanting any of that. So he uh, threw a, uh, threw a big uh, ball of pain at me. Well, you well you went and tried to sweet talk a scary skeleton man. I could have told you that wasn't gonna work. Yeah. Uh, okay. He. Uh, goes. Uh, now, can you repair it or not? Well, you see, I'm not in the habit of doing charity work. If you want something from me. Uh, you gotta do something for me, and I need goats. Uh, yeah. Fine. I uh, okay. put the boats there, uh, boat pieces there, muttering to myself as I go. Now, where did you get the last set? At last set. Well, if you wander around off the beaten path long enough, you'll find some critters rummaging around. And I need something edible, because I like eating. Okay. 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 I'm still feeling rather angry and hurt and all this fun stuff. I mutter to, I mutter to myself, this is not... Uh, as I'm out of earshot, going... Uh, this better be uh, God, all this better be worth it in the end. I, uh, I never had to work so hard in my in my life. Uh, and I I go and search uh, for ghosts, but I will have to say I'm gonna have to go because my phone's still at low back uh, low battery power, and my backup battery is about to go. All right. Yeah, we can wrap it up here. All right. Later. Later.